right guys welcome to another episode of that's what that was today we will be debating the motion uh, the house believes that the media should not be allowed to report on suicide and we have six speakers again uh, for this debate uh, we have with us a birthday boy in fact uh, pradyum uh, speaking for the motion we have rohan agarwal uh, speaking for the motion and anirudh choudhury speaking for the motion we have speaking against the motion Ranak Banerjee, Avay Tulsiyan, and uh, Jay Purwar. Uh, thank you guys for joining in, and uh, best of luck to you all. Uh, I will be serving as both your judge and your moderator. So I think, uh, according to our speaking order, we'll be beginning with our birthday boy, who has decided to opt uh, for two minutes at the start of his speech. And could I interject for a second? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, the topic is the the media should not post news on suicide. Uh, yeah. Allowed is not. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, should not, should not. My bad, that was a slip of tongue. Thank you for that. Uh, the media should not uh, uh, report uh, on suicide. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we are all set. Uh, Pradyum, are you ready? Yeah. Right. So, uh, for the first two minutes of your speech. Uh, our timer is set, uh, and yeah, the floor is yours. Okay. So today the motion reads: oh, the media should not post news on suicide. Now understand that the media is the main means of mass communication, from which people get to know about rapid developments around the world. News would be newly received info, which people take note of through media like newspaper, uh, internet, publications. News which would be surprising, information which people would not know without the media. Suicide is the act of taking one's own life. Now today, understand that suicide is not a rare action or concept. It is not alien to us. It's not like it happens once a month. It happens once every 40 seconds, amounting, amounting to 800,000 people per year. Every time a suicide is committed, it cannot be reported. But still, a huge number of reports are published, planting terror in minds already having suicidal thoughts. Please understand that media today is not normative. It provides straight, straightforward information, a major part of it which is not geared towards preventing suicide. It dully provides information, informing us about how the person killed themselves, why they did so, where they did so, and what weapon, what weapon they used, what poison they used, or how like how they did how they committed suicide. In the end, one line about how we should call a helpline to prevent further suicide, or how we should uh, how we should inform the authorities about problems our friends have been having, or if we want to prevent suicide. Um, in our in our own friend circle. Now understand that this one line, what it cannot prevent suicide after 500 words of of grave information already provided through that media. It's not media is not a positive media is not normative. It does not tell us that we should not commit suicide. It is already telling us how and why a person has committed suicide and how exactly. gravely this person has committed suicide. So today. Manheed, uh, Manheed Grewal, an actor, died through unpaid dues and no work. He died because of unpaid dues and no work. If today I go to a person suffering from ADHD, mental instability, who is already having suicide thoughts, and I tell him that he's killed himself because his life was in a mess, is that person going to thank me for telling him that a person suffering from unpaid dues and no work has killed himself? Or is it going to plant terror in his mind that people are killing themselves and he should think about doing so too? So media, instead of preventing suicide, it plants terrors in mind with suicidal thoughts and therefore provides us information which would rather escalate suicide rather than preventing it. Thank you. Right. Pradeem, uh, we'll be giving you a minute and 45 seconds for your for the second part of your speech because you exceeded the time bar a bit. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we will now be moving on to questions on uh, Pradyum's speech. We will first take a question from Aver. Sir, you were, don't you believe that your entire stance which you took in your first speech was not against the media reporting on suicide, but rather the media reporting on suicide in the way it's currently doing it. If the media adds more information about mental health and about how you should prevent things like this, don't you believe that that's okay to post? And that um, TV not today the motion reads the media should not post news on suicide. News means information on suicide, not how we should uh, act towards preventing suicide. 
So posting news on suicide means informing people about how suicide has been committed and where suicide has been committed and who has committed suicide. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Pradyum. Um, thank you, Avan, for your question. Uh, a follow-up. Uh, sure, if uh, Pradyum school visit, sure, go ahead. Sir, don't you believe that such news is accompanied in an article with how you can prevent suicide? Those two go hand in hand. Sir, as I said in my speech, one line is geared towards trying to prevent suicide by, by providing information on how we can call a helpline. But after a majority of that article has already been geared towards providing them information on how suicide has been committed, not committing suicide becomes a very insignificant matter in the, in the article itself. So they should put, so your, your stance is that they should make that one line more than one line. They would, they, they should, should have posting made, should, instead of stopping it outright. Why not improve the way it's currently being reported? But it's not being improved. I cannot improve it. It's not being improved. The media is not improving it themselves. That's why we are in the situation where we, you know, basically just get to know about why suicide has been committed and how suicide has been committed, not how we should stop committing like suicide. Right, that was an interesting piece of discourse we moved into. However, uh, while while it was interesting, I would like to uh, ask Aware to please refrain from you know uh, 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 continuing. Uh, sorry. Yeah, no, not a problem. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we will now be moving. Uh, thank you, Pradyum. Uh, seeing as there is no one else with the question, we'll move on to the next speaker, which is Ranak uh, Banerjee speaking against the motion. Yeah. Ranak, are you ready? Yeah. Right. Uh, so, Ranak, you have two minutes on the clock, and yeah, the floor is yours. Okay. So, basically, the motion today reads that suicide should not be posted in media as news. Now, the thing with this motion is that it's a very black and white motion. It is either you post news or you don't post news. We have been given nothing about how this news has been posted. So, my debate will be uh, divided into two parts as to why we need to post news on suicide, and the second part covering how we should post this news on suicide. Now, why should suicide as a topic be covered by media? Well, the first and the very obvious reason is as to why the media exists at all, to spread awareness. Suicide is, the problem with suicide is that people look at it as a very, how do I put it, as a very shallow matter. They just look at it as a person taking his own life, but suicide is much bigger than that. Suicide is basically an entire social problem. As the rates have already been put forward by the proposition, a person takes his life every 40 seconds. Is that the individual problem of the person? I, I do not believe so. It's an entire social problem. Now, media does not exactly post news on the suicide, but it also draws awareness to why this suicide took place as to the cause of it. Like, let's take, for example, Kota. All of us are aware of it. Okay, it's a great, it's a great coaching center. But all of us are also aware that the number of suicides which take place of there are more than anywhere else in the country. Farmers in Maharashtra are taking lives, taking their own lives every single day. Is that only an individual problem of the farmers or is it an entire social problem? Media gives light on this social problem and puts the attention of us and the government towards this so that we can take a stance against this. This is one reason as to why suicide seconds. should be posted in the media. Now, the second, the second stance is that it has been shown by studies that suicide can all, that news on suicide can also promote reverse copycat suicides. So basically, when you post news on suicide, you basic, you give the other person an idea that yes, such things actually do exist, that other people also go through such troubles, and you encourage that person to try and find help. Because now this person understands what will happen if he takes his own life. So now these are the two points as to why media should post news on suicide. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Ranak, with a pinpoint ending to the first half of your speech. We will now be taking questions. Uh, we will first take a question from Pradyum and see what the rest of the floor has to say after. As you said um, uh, that it, it helps in spreading awareness when people get to know that somebody had the same problems as they had. But the fact that this person committed suicide and it has been reported, does it, doesn't it encourage that person to go ahead and commit suicide themselves? Well, exactly. As the, my debate is split in, uh, split in two parts, now I have highlighted the need as to why we should report. But now an entire section is also based on how we should report it. Now, if you control how the news is reported through certain techniques, which I'll highlight in the second part of my report, you can actually reverse the effect of copycat suicides. So instead of encouraging suicides, you'll be discouraging suicides if the correct guidelines are followed. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rana. Thank you, Pradyam.
is there anyone else with a question uh, to uh, Ranak or shall we move on? Right. Seeing as there are none, we will now move on to uh, Rohan Agarwal, uh, who is attending uh, the this episode. Uh, who is attending the floor is yours for the first time. Welcome, uh, Rohan. Uh, Rohan, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, Rohan, you have uh, four minutes on the clock. Uh, uh, the well, your time starts now. The floor is yours. So uh, the topic for the debate today is that the media should not post news on suicide. And I would like to stress on the word not. So today I'm going to show you how it's completely required for the media to not post uh, news on the suicide. So in many, in, uh, in most of the news which they post, they, they include a lot of details about how the suicide was done and which weapon it was used. And they glorify it a lot, which actually increases the amount of suicides growing, uh, the, which actually increases the amount of suicide rates. So recently, uh, a research said that in the four months after the Rob, Robin Williams highly publicized 2014 uh, death through suicide, uh, there was a 10% increase in the deaths through suicides. Another, another example which I would like to take up is Kate Spade's suicide, which was glorified by the media, which also led in the increase of the rates of suicide. The news posted by, about suicide by the media further leads to depression, which causes more suicide. Simply, I just want to say is that the news posted by this media just leads to more and more suicides. And it is an unbreakable loop, which can only be stopped by not posting uh, news on this matter. Many teens after getting the results, for example, many, many students in Kota su uh, take suicides because they do not actually being able to cope up with what is taking place. So if, for example, if a person gets a bad result and then the next day he sees that many of his likewise students have taken their life, won't he, and, and, what, the, and what the media is doing is glorifying it. So won't they actually want to take the suicide? Would they, won't they actually want to take their own life instead of thinking of something nice? I would even like to say that the PCI or the Press Council of India has set new guidelines and have asked media not to sensationalize reports on suicide and they have explicitly told not to include any details on how the suicide was taking place or to include any photographs because it actually just motivates the other people to take suicide, to take their own life. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Rohan. Are you sure you don't want to carry on because you have about a minute and a half left? No, I'm sorry. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Rohan. Uh, with that, uh, we will now be taking questions on Rohan's uh, speech. Uh, we will first take a question from Agar. Sir, considering the fact that social media is now a very efficient method of spreading news, typically particularly sensational news such as that of suicides, don't don't you believe that risk, that the press or the mainstream media not posting news about suicide will not really do anything because this news will still be circulated on social media and people will will still get to know about it. I just want to. So one thing is that social media is also a part of media, right? It is also just a type of media. The 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 motion here is talking about mainstream, uh, and that's the context in which we've been debating and you've been debating. Not exactly specified. Right. So social media uh, is also a part of media, so it is also included in that. Yeah, fair enough. That's the response, Ava. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll, uh, in that case, uh, thank you, Rohan, for your speech. Thank you, Ava, for your question. And I think it is only fitting that we move on to our next speaker, which is actually you, Ava, uh, who, uh, and now, Ava, you have four minutes on the clock. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. Uh, so, Ava, your time starts now. All right. So, I'd like to begin by responding to Pradyuman's speech. He said that 
after 500 words of news about suicide and how it happened and why it happened one line about that said that says that gives us a suicide helpline number doesn't do anything but what i'd like to argue is that the news about a suicide in and of itself something so terrible something so gruesome creates a thought in people's minds that yes uh, mental health is an actual issue depression anxiety is an actual issue this sort of awareness actually causes people to think about their own mental health and that of people around them when when parents uh, read news news like this in the mainstream media then only will they understand the actual effect of things uh, the actual effect of mental health issues and then only will they start paying more attention to the mental health of their children he his Pradyuman's entire speech was about how the current system of posting news about suicide is bad and how the current system does causes does nothing but cause more suicide and it quote unquote plants terror in the minds of people but I'd like to argue that even if the current system is bad it can always be improved we don't believe i don't believe that simply brushing something as important like this under the carpet is going to help change anything in any positive way the entire point of mental health right now or, or mental health issues right now is to spread awareness about it so that people actually understand the issues that can come about as a result of it and so that things like this become destigmatized so that people can talk Talk more freely about their mental health issues so that people can actually go and seek help for their mental health issues and the ironically posting news about suicide actually will help reduce suicide and save lives in the future because and suppressing information about this is actively dangerous and it is certainly harmful to society additionally this in the first three speeches, everyone has focused on only the mainstream media, only the mainstream media houses. The uh, Pradyuman and Rohan kept going on about how people should not, it should not be brought up in news outlets, it should not be put up on TV, things like that. But the point is that in this motion, we are on, we're talking, we're not talking about social media. Irrespective of whether this motion, in the motion, the media refers to, clearly refers to mainstream media outlets. It's not that Facebook and Twitter and Instagram can completely uh, refrain, can completely stop everyone from talking about the subject as a whole the entire the the point which i'm trying to make here is that irrespective of whether or not people will post uh, the the media posts news about suicide people will still get to know where through WhatsApp, whether it's through Instagram, through Facebook, Snapchat, whatever it may be, or even through simple old word of mouth, people will get to know. And at least if it's coming through mainstream trusted media outlets, there will be fake news will be cut down on a lot. And the, the way in which people find out about these things can be much better regulated. I agree. People, uh, the way current, the way it is current, so suicide is currently being reported isn't the right way to do it. It isn't the best way to do it. But by not changing it and simply stopping it outright, we're not going to be able to control the way a uh, people find out about it, to control the way people think about it, to allow okay, wrap up. To actually destigmatize something as sensitive as this. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Abba. That was quite a good, uh, quite a good. Uh, uh, timely ending to your speech, so I thank you for that. Uh, are there any questions on our speech? Right. Pradyu, go ahead. So, in accordance with your speech, should we just not write about uh, suicide as an issue rather than uh, post news on it? Because you spoke about uh, suicide as an issue, not as something, uh, not as something like a headline. Shouldn't we just write it about an issue rather than make it a headline? Sir, if we write about it as an issue rather than make it a headline, it's still going to be news. You're accepting my side of the motion, aren't you? But the motion reads the media cannot post, uh, should not post news on suicide. Post, writing about it in uh, writing about it as like as an issue is not news. Sir, anything that is written in the newspaper is considered news. Um. 
All right. If you're writing an editorial, you know there's an editorial page of the newspaper where, where the editors write their opinions, even though that's not always concrete information and it's often opinionated, it's still considered news. News doesn't only mean information. That's that's not how news works, sir. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ava. Thank you, Pradyum. Uh, Rohan, yes, your question. Uh, in your speech, you said that uh, the information about the suicide would anyways go out or, or even through the old-fashioned old way of the word of mouth. But don't you think that through the word of mouth, the details provided about uh, how, how the suicide has taken place will not be able to be transferred through the word of mouth? So why will people not talk about the details of the suicide through through word of mouth? I would argue actually that when people talk about it through word of mouth, it actually becomes more exaggerated and exacerbated and people try to sensationalize, uh, sensationalize it even more because it makes for interesting conversation as terrible as that might be. If we only get information like this out through word of mouth, it's extremely dangerous to society. Right. Okay. So just to clarify, you believe that just uh, to have two, th two questions, just to clarify what you said right now, uh, you believe that word of mouth just exaggerates the situation a bit more, right? Yes. Right. So All right. Uh, and secondly, uh, earlier, uh, the uh, earlier part of your speech, you know, you mentioned something along the lines of parenting along the, along the lines of suicide. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So my question to you is, uh, you said something along the lines of when parents are made more aware of it, only then do they apply it. So do you not believe that, uh, do you not believe that as soon as a parent has had a child, the parent is instantly more conscious about their child and, you know, we want to make sure that child is more nurtured. Uh, I mean, a good parent would want to make sure that their child is more nurtured and protected, right? So do you yes. not believe, so uh, don't you think that a parent should already uh, have uh, the knowledge on how to deal with uh, such a scenario to make sure their child does not have to resort to such a measure in the first place? Sir, the, sir, mental health being a very stigmatized issue isn't really something that parents talk about as much. It isn't something which they were very acquainted with while they were growing up. Mental health is something that's really come about in the recent past and right now since information about this, especially in India, is extremely lacking. It is essential that we inform people about it and continue to increase their knowledge about it so that they can deal with it effectively. Right. Thank you. That was uh, a very uh, satisfactory answer, if I'm being honest. Um, uh, but anyhow, uh, thank you, Ava. Uh, and we will uh, now, seeing as there are no uh, questions or clarifications, we'll just move on to the next speaker, which is Anirudh Choudhury, who is the last uh, speak speaker, for, uh, speaker proposing the motion, of course, uh, uh, not taking into account the second part of Pradeem's speech. Uh, Anirudh, are you ready? Yeah. Should I begin? Yeah. You have four minutes on the clock. The floor is yours. Yeah. The topic under hammer for today's debate reads that suicide news should not be posted on media. And I being the third speaker for side proposition, it is my utmost prerogative to prove to you how true and valid the topic really is. So as, as the second speaker of side proposition mentioned that suicide news can spread through word of mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, please try to understand that people start conversing about a suicide issue when it is posted on media. They see it and then they start the discussion about it. So in the first place, if it's not posted on media, people will not talk about it. And in the 21st century, people from all ages watch television, watch news on television. So if a, if a child watches a news about suicide, he becomes more susceptible to commit such a suicide because in that little age, he's very gullible and influenceable. And there is a phenomenon called copycat suicide. So when you see someone facing an issue and he has committed suicide, and similarly you are facing the same issue, you tend to commit the suicide rather than solving a problem. Children start thinking that committing suicide is easier than solving a problem. They fail to realize that solving a problem is the best way to get out of it. They start thinking that committing suicide is the easy way out. But they, but they fail to fail to realize that there is an impact of the suicide on the on the victim's family as well. Furthermore, there are 40 
forty scientific papers that prove that suicide goes up by fourteen point two zero percent after a celebrity commits suicide. People watch that celebrity committing suicide and they get influenced and they rather think that committing suicide is okay. They can commit suicide. They they tend to become gullible to that suicide and more susceptible. This. and one more thing this has an emotional burden on the people watching the suicide no- news on the television ladies and gentlemen they carry anxiety distress rather than focusing on their work they keep thinking about the same suicide issue that has been posted on the television and one thing as as parenting is concerned i think it is a parent's responsibility to make the child aware about what he should do and what he shouldn't it is the responsibility of parent to talk to his child about whether he should commit suicide how he should go about dealing with problems rather than making a child see actual real news on television so that he gets gets to know about the problems that are going on in the actual world and he gets more susceptible and gullible to the uh, to the harshness of the entire world so so that he commits suicide and ladies and gentlemen we also need to uh, realize that once we post a news on suicide of on so- social media the victim's family also has to face a very negative impact he has to suffer social social humiliation they people start calling him what kind of a child have you given birth to that he can't deal with the world he has to commit suicide he's so weak he, they don't get enough respect in the social social society they can't live freely in this world so we need to realize that posting sh- posting news about suicide on so- social media or mainstream media is not the correct way out we should just keep it confidential and ex- parents should take the responsibility to explain the child about what they should do and how they should go about life thank you and i'm very proud to propose right thank you uh, thank you anirudh uh, we will now open the floor to questions uh, we will start with other uh, did you recognize me yes okay Uh, so i have a three fold question can i ask that or do i have to go with two um i would prefer you keep it uh, a bit more crisp but uh, as long as it's a bit it's easier for him to answer it sure as in in terms of uh, okay so firstly sir you uh anur can you hear me yeah so firstly you were speaking about how if people don't talk or if we don't post news about suicide on the media then it won't be spread through society but sir when a suicide happens then in that locality it automatically becomes a big affair because people can either see the body or the police come there and everybody somehow or the other knows irrespective of whether or not it's posted on mainstream media and as soon as that happens people tell each other and it goes or it, and it's a domino effect and the entire society ends up getting to know about it whether whether or not it's posted on mainstream media. Yeah. So, how do you propose if you want to completely make a suicide absolutely confidential? Then, how do you propose to do that? And also, if you don't want to, in and or you also spoke about how uh p how the victim's family gets socially shunned. Don't so you? So, can I answer one question at a time? Yeah. Okay. Then you, yeah. Okay. So, so if if the news isn't posted on on media, social media, or mainstream media, people will. gossip or discuss about it for one or two days just because it's posted on media it becomes much of a bigger issue and people start conversing about it for months and months and it becomes a greater issue and a exaggerated issue in the society so if it's not posted on media the the issue will succumb and it'll come to an end in just a few days sir you also spoke so you also spoke about how parents have the responsibility of talking to their children about mental health and suicide how will parents have the awareness if mainstream media does not tell them about such mental health issues considering the fact that in indian societies especially mental health has never been considered a big issue and most parents are actually unaware of it even though our parents may not be unaware so so uh, we need to realize one thing if, if as a parent you you are eligible to give birth to a child you should even know that mental mental health and suicide are a bigger issue in this current world scenario so a parent when a child in his teenage years a parent should take the responsibility to go up to him and explain to him about the social issues 
such as suicide and mental health that are prevailing in the society rather than showing him actual news on the television which can have a greater effect on his moral compass um may i follow up on that what yeah go ahead yeah so sir i am not proposing that the parent take the child sit them in front of a television and say here's news about suicide watch it i am saying that the news about suicide and related mental health issues will create an awareness about mental health in the parent who will then proceed to talk to the child independently of media and i agree, and obviously since in society today yes it is the parents responsibility to talk to their children about mental health but if the parents don't know about it then mainstream media needs to tell them in the context of suicide or other mental health related issues so do you think a person who's who's a adult and has given birth to a child doesn't know about suicide and mental health and he needs the media to tell him about all these problems that are prevailing in the society definitely the parents knows about it and he he fails to do it do go up, go up to his child and talk to it because he he isn't successful in his parenting had he been successful in his parenting he would go up to his child and explain him about that he doesn't need media to make him aware of all these scenarios of the current current world thank you so parents know that suicide exists but they don't know the the in terms of mental health in today's situation because so i think i think, I think they are more than like more than more than aware of not all parents are perfect uh, aver aver there is no reason to uh, interrupt here. oh all right i'll, I'll end I this just, i just i just request yeah thank you i just request anirudh to finish this point and then we'll move on yeah so so you saying the parents parents don't realize the importance of mental health so do you realize in their day to day lives they they themselves are going through so much mental distress that they know the importance of mental distress so they should be more than more than responsible to go up to the child and speak to them about this social conflict right uh, ranak did you have something to say yeah yeah i had a question all right go ahead okay so basically you have kept on saying that we shouldn't post news on suicide as it will keep on encouraging suicide right but now the thing is that posting news on suicide doesn't only mean posting about individual cases like posting suicide doesn't mean that you will keep on saying that okay person a has died and killed himself in this way person b has killed himself in that way that doesn't exactly constitute posting news on suicide what about what about the entire part of spreading awareness it's a mental health issue right so the only way to solve it is by talking about it but if you do not post absolutely anything on suicide and completely scrub it of media now no one is aware so how can you fight a mental health problem without spreading awareness so could you please precipitate the question i didn't, uh, I didn't get the it. question the, so basically your entire stance has been that nobody should post anything on suicide it'll, as it will keep on exacerbating suicide but now posting news on suicide is also covers posting awareness when you're posting editorials about how suicide can be fought posting the reasons on why suicide has taken place the general reasons as to why people yeah. kill themselves yeah, so yeah how can you solve the problem of or spreading awareness without yeah. talking about it and without spreading yeah. awareness yeah yeah so sir i gave a very very simple replacement of uh, posting news on social uh, media i i i gave you a replacement that was that parents should go and talk to their child so this is a re- replacement of children getting to know about it through media parent if the parents go up to go, go up to the child and speak speak to them about mental distress and suicide the children will get to know that it is a wrong thing and they shouldn't commit such things and they should be aware and know the importance of such things and they should stay in a healthy moral compass Uh, how is the parent aware of what causes what are the general causes of suicide and what so aren't just no no let's say that you are three generations uh, through you have uh, you have completely scrubbed off this news for three generations so how is any parent aware of what to do if no if not if nobody is aware then how are the parents automatically aware when uh, so parents are not born biologically knowing the reasons for suicide and everything ah uh, he got the question there's no reason to you know further ex- explain sorry, it sorry sorry yeah Okay, yeah. do you want to respond? I'd, li- I'd like to just interject with one thing. Uh I really wouldn't uh, look favorably upon that. Uh but if you insist, sure. I mean, all I wanted to say is that it isn't just teenagers and children who commit suicide. It's also adults. That's true. So the parents true. it's also that part of the spectrum. Right. Well, uh uh you know, do you want to respond to Rana or should we move on? Yeah, I want to respond to Rana. 
Yeah, yeah the highest question is the trouble of media. How, okay, so, so just because, just because, for example, we have script of Sati from media. That doesn't mean people like us aren't aware of Sati. It's a social evil, and people will get aware of it no matter if, even if we scrape it off media. It's a social evil, and people tend to get aware of it just, just by its own. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll have it, have it. We'll have people getting aware of it from generation to generation. For example, my father speaks to me about this, and I'll speak to my children about it. So the awareness about suicide and mental distress will go on from generation to generation just by parents speaking about it rather than posting it on media. Right. Uh, so I, I can't follow that up, can I? Um, uh, I would recommend not. But for the uh, but I I want. But like we have time, right? It's like six forty. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just want to have some constructive debate at this point in time. So, uh, do uh, would would you be open to moving further into questioning? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And Rana, go ahead. So you said that the only so we have to combat suicide by keeping on spreading this news from generation to generation. But now yeah. my question is the only reason you are aware about Sati is that because you were taught in school. It's because it's widely available in media. If when you when I search a, when I, let's say I look up Sati right now on Google, do I find news about Sati? Obviously, I obviously find awareness about Sati, what it was, its entire history, because it has been reported now. So it is because of being reported that I am aware. Like just taking your example, I'm aware about Sati because it has been reported to me. So, so, so even even we have enough enough news about suicide on so social media and media now. I'm saying to stop it, stop it now. So we have past cases, but we won't have any new cases. We'll know about suicide and uh, so su- we'll know about suicide and mental distress from the past cases, and we won't have new cases coming up on the media. So we'll get to know about it, and we can stop stop it from spreading on media as well. Uh, right. I mean, I think uh, it's like I would personally like to interject here for a moment. Uh, at this point, instead of moving into questioning on Anirudh, I would like to ask uh, the entire floor a question. It's that, I mean, Anirudh in his speech, uh, which really uh, stuck with me, he spoke about, you know, uh, the embarrassment or, you know, the, the social humiliation that a family would face if, you know, the death of one's relative in like one in the family is you know reported and other people find out so i what i would like to ask everyone here anyone can answer to be honest is that uh how should uh, the uh, you can uh, you can attack it from like in in terms of its morality how should uh, the media uh, report how not if it should or should not yeah how if they get the scoop should they take the permission from them or should they uh, report the news in a more empathetic form or so that on is, and so forth? That is the second part of my speech. Oh. How the media is. The first part was the need and the second part is the how. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get to that, of course. Uh, but uh, just... just Let's yes. finish all the speeches first and then maybe we we'll go into discussion. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. perfect. Uh, we'll move into that later then at the end. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I really found uh, this line of discourse quite productive. To the speakers, uh, I would like to just mention that to the speakers, and we would now uh, be moving on to the final uh, speaker, which is, who has been waiting uh, for quite a while now, it seems, uh, which is Jay Purwar. Uh, Jay, you have four minutes. Uh, are you ready? Am I clearly audible? Uh, yes, you are. Uh, I would request right. the rest of the speakers to please mute their mics because there's uh, getting a bit of audio relay. Right, that's better. Uh, so, uh, Jay, uh, you have four minutes on the clock. The floor is yours. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the entire proposition's argument was based on the copycat effect, or as it is known as in the context of suicide, a suicide contagion. Now, the entire idea needs to be questioned before we move on with the decision as an entire discourse. Now, it should be understood that the entire concept of it was conceived by comparing the rate of suicide before and after a certain news report regarding suicide, be it the frequency of suicide reported or maybe a celebrity news report. Right. But here's the problem. There is no cause effect relationship that can be clearly established between the two. It is important that it is established before we move forward by taking it into consideration as an important reason for why media should not post news on suicide. Then and then understand that if you sneeze and your friend falls, it does not mean that you he fell because you sneeze. That is what the proposition is proposing here today. 
it should be understood that the entire resource of the body of work was based on number when the entire idea is about the person's psychology how he perceives a certain piece of information that is suicide and this is why researchers have again and again stressed on the fact that this particular piece of research that is suicide contagion should be more closely monitored with people's life this entire concept is watered down with vaguely cause effect relationship but even if we do accept this cause effect relationship it isn't much of a contagion however it is simply an indicator of increased risk at best its wide usage of the term contagion is very provocative and hyperbolic meant to spur people to believe that even the mere mention of suicide without proper accompanying warnings is going to cause widespread death then i mean unlike what the proposition has portrayed here today you cannot catch suicidal thoughts and behaviors like in cold or a disease then i mean this is the reason why this entire argument fails to stand because it is not concrete enough evidence for us to stop the reporting of every suicide news then i mean needless to say that there is a significant public interest in the reporting of suicide as it remains a very important public health concern the death of a person or an individual is a matter of public record and importance and widely affects the community as well as those people who are personally associated with him journalists have a basic right to report the fact of a person's death even if surviving family members would prefer there be no reporting when you understand in reporting they may clear up all suspicions or rumors around the death of of the person they may also draw attention which may have led to further death or injury when and like one of the speakers from the proposition proposed that many students studying in kota commit suicide because they aren't able to cope up lane and that is exactly the sort of thing that requires why this should be reported so that this comes into the public eye rather than being swept under the rug when and when there is a higher chance that you may die while driving to a surgery than you die in a surgery that doesn't mean we completely stop driving that means we are asked to wear seat belts we airbags are installed then and when this is the reason why we need to have more responsible reporting rather than stopping reporting altogether then and when there are rules established by journalistic bodies and organizations like reporting important details not reporting details around the physicality or the health of the person but around the cause and effect of death then and when these are the steps which is going to take us to a more aware and more informative society rather than completely stopping it which is essentially going to take us back to the stone ages then and when anirudh's entire argument was that let it pass it from parent to parent because one day one parent is not going to know and then it's going to stop eventually then your parents won't know what mental health is neither would you and nor would your children then and when this is for years our entire human kind has tried to gain an unfettered a communication system that is the social media that we have today and this entire argument takes us back to the wrong side of history takes it back years back which is why i would like to conclude my speech by saying that now is the time that we need to talk about suicide that we need to talk about issues like this uh, right uh, with a quite a pin pointed ending to your speech thank you jay uh, does anyone have a question on jay's speech uh, right Uh, Anirudh, your question. Sir, I have two questions. Uh, first, I'll ask my first question. If you'll answer it, then I'll ask my second. All right, all right. Yeah. So, first question is, uh, sir, you said you mentioned in your speech that there is a difference in rate before and after a news has been reported. So, there is a four point zero two percent increase in the rate of suicide after. a news has been reported so don't you think we shouldn't report suicide news on uh, media so like i mentioned in my speech there has to be a cause effect relationship for a conjecture to become a proper theory to be taken into consideration right now understand if there is a increase in rate in the number of suicides after a suicide report there has to be some cause effect relationship based on a scientific principle right that is the point i'm uh, explaining today that there has been no cause effect relationship that has been described all this has been a game of numbers from the scientists even the researchers agree that they need to have a most close monitored and focused aspect on the people people who are committing suicide there has to be a closer outlook only then can this theory be 100% clarified right right uh, is there any other question Right. Uh, so, Anirudh, sir, 
he also mentioned that uh, me i mentioned that he mentioned that i mentioned that it it the uh, the information about suicide and mental distress needs to come from parents to children and then then to their children so don't you think the the only responsibility of spreading such information lies with the parents not with the social counselors and teachers so i don't think so do you think it's possible for all three people that social counselors teachers and parents to forget spreading this information to children wait can you repeat the question so the the responsibility of making the children aware about suicide and social distress not only lies with the parents but also with the teachers and social counselors so do you so do you believe that all three people will forget to make the child aware of social distress and uh, or suicide as you mentioned in your speech yes sir i definitely agree that it is the responsibility of of all three people you mentioned the parents the teachers the counselors and which is why this needs to be put out in media which is why it needs to be talked about so that one day when the time comes they talk about it. they talk about these issues to their respective children or their students they can understand when it is discussed in the media it is not just the gory details of how the man died or which tool he stood on it is about the cause and effect that what, what implications his death had and what were the reasons of his death then you know when those details are discussed it goes out into the public that yes these people are also suffering from the same thing i am that this is something that is prevalent that my child may be suffering from this then you know understand this is not just about children as avay mentioned there are adults people in their late 40s late 50s committing suicide peer pressure or familial abuse it can be numerous things then i mean which is why this needs to be talked about this is, this, is, this is not a very constrained spectrum a person can commit suicide because of hundreds of reasons uh thank you jeb uh, seeing as there is no other question can i have a follow up can i have a follow up um sure go ahead so the the motion says that should we post uh, news on social media on uh, news news on suicide on media so so the 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 majority of the people getting affected from it is teenagers and children that why that is why i have narrowed the scope of the debate to teenagers and children because uh, adults committing suicide is because of their own choice because of their own own reasons own personal reason it is not because of the media and so do you so do you think that Uh, do you think that if parents and social counselors talk to the children about suicides and mental distress there is a need of media reporting about the, the about the cases sir completely and agree that the majority of the suicide uh, people who commit suicide are children teenagers young adults but that doesn't mean we completely ignore the adults who commit suicide right and i completely understand how much importance it plays with teachers and school counselors but it should also be take i agree that students and school counselors are very important they pass on important pieces of information right but not everybody has teachers that are that aware or school counselors that are aware we are talking about not just india but the entire world we have third world countries people who don't have adequate amount of money or even financial resources to carry on with their life how do you expect them to enroll in schools with school counselors you and i may be of the privileged class having counselors to talk to many people don't right a random boy sitting in a slum when he turns on the tv does not have a school counselor to talk to him maybe he sees a news report from another child committing suicide that tells him that there is a different way to it that this is what happens when you commit suicide or this may be the reason last follow up last follow up i last would uh, go ahead so how how likely is it that not not even one of the three people aren't aware of the suicide and mental distress concept all right one fourth of india's population lives below the poverty line right do you expect them to en- get enrolled in a school with teachers we having adequate information about mental health having school counselors how many government schools in india do you think have school counselors talking about mental health then there's a reason why there has been certain outburst even on social media or media around the world regarding the importance of mental health because previously it was not something that was stressed on previously it was something that was completely ignored which is why it is being brought into the light which is why being discussed right here that should it be talked about 
your utter importance of teachers and school counselors is overwhelming right uh, thank you uh, thank you uh, anirudh uh, thank you jay uh, abhay is there a question uh, it's not a question it's just a statistic which i think could be uh, good for the debate right yeah, now go ahead go ahead uh, to anirudh and the rest of the proposition the suicide rates for females are highest among those aged 45 to 54 and suicide rates for males are highest amongst those aged 75 plus that's quite the interesting statistic actually considering how our debate was flowing earlier uh, but anyhow uh, my question uh, i just have one simple question uh, for jay Uh, Jay, uh, like to harp on the just what you were speaking to Anurudh about earlier, and one of an earlier point you made on the speech about how uh, about reporting the how the uh, issue is reported, right? The cause and effect analysis, right? So, do you believe that instead of you know tackling it from what, how did he die, why did he do it, instead of just continuously explaining that, you must uh, do you not think that the media should instead you know uh, explain to their viewers that you know this is what this is the fact of the matter and this is what you as a human being should do should do in your own power to make sure that you know this doesn't happen to you or your own loved ones and you know uh, give, uh, give certain uh, measure uh, give them certain measures you know that like just like off the top of my head that you know uh, speak to someone about it or speak to a psychologist etc etc uh, how do you think in that respect that the media should actually tackle it i'm just asking you to go like just explain that point to me a little further all right uh, like abhay mentioned that this the topic of suicide should be reported better it is not being reported well it could be done better right i completely agree with you that the perspective of cause effect the importance stressing on mental health the importance of going to someone for help that should be highlighted and that is what we are discussing here today right that something is not being reported well but should it be stopped because of that cool. or should it be improved and reported well yeah uh, thank you that was actually what i was looking for rajar so thank you for that um with that i think we've wrapped up all the speakers for now and we will now be moving on to the final two halves of both speeches of ranak and of uh, sorry not uh, ranak of uh, prad Pradyum, yes, sorry, yes, Pradyum and Ranak. We will start with uh, Pradyum. Uh, Pradyum, okay, I want to ask a question. Like, did I miss anything when I was out of the meeting? Uh, it was just a, a bit of line of questioning on uh, towards Jay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Pradyum, you have uh, two minutes on the clock. Uh, you have a minute and forty-five on the clock because you extended your time, if you remember. Uh, so, are uh, you ready? Yeah. well for your final speech happy birthday and your time starts now okay so the first speaker of the opposition spoke about how um, media helps in spreading awareness so you're sending a message to people that people have the same problems as they do but when you are adding that line that this person has committed suicide you're sending a negative message across you're propagating the message that when these people have these problems they commit suicide and thus these people who are reading that media, who are reading the reports by the media are getting that message that they should also commit suicide or committing suicide is the solution emphasized on by anirudh the second speaker spoke about how social media is also a factor when it comes to this debate so as a user of social media as part of a social circle i want you to understand that there are there are people who think about suicide positively that how should it, it should be prevented but then there are also people who then there are also people who take it in a very negative manner who who make who make a joke out of it there are all kinds of people on social media social media is a very dynamic platform and you all have ruled out the very concept of cyber bullying how so how suicide can be made a joke out of and how people having mental problems can be bullied and can be can be annoyed and you can tell them that you they are weak that is what some people do and my friends do that too i am speaking from personal experience now second speaker said anything about parenting in a conservative society like ours understand that when people or parents get to know about suicide they want to make their children stronger they don't want to them to have thoughts about they don't want them to have suicidal thoughts instead of working with these problems instead of sorting out these thoughts what they do is that you have to be strong they tell the child that you have to be strong you cannot commit suicide they don't let their children have suicidal thoughts 
they, therefore they are basically depressing the child by Our saying that they are not out to have sex today the side opposition has spoken about how it can be improved but who is improving it it is not being improved media media channels gain from making suicide a headline rather than helping people who have suicidal thoughts right uh, thank you uh, thank you pradeep uh, are there any questions on pradeep's speech Uh, right uh abhay go ahead yeah so you spoke about how in today's society when parents find out about their ch- about such mental health issues they tell their child you have to be strong you cannot commit suicide sir my question to you is that if we do not explain the nature of mental health in the context of suicide to parents then how will they understand that simply telling the child you have to be strong will not fix anything and that they have to get help from a professional how will the parents find this out so uh, as you spoke about you know coming news coming out of, from the word of mouth this word of mouth basically tells parents that other people are committing suicide and this exaggerated word of mouth wants them wants them to raise their child's better them to nurture their child and if this exaggerated news is coming from the word of mouth it sends a message across to parents that there might be problems there actually might be problems uh, in their child's life sir so you would rather have a uh, people talking about things sensationalizing them dram- dr- making it more dramatic completely negating any sort of uh, you, you your side kept speaking about people's de- the, the dignity and the societal uh, position of the family that will go down the drain if this uh, sort of an issue is more and more sensationalized don't you believe that if the media establishes certain guidelines according to which some th- is things as sensitive as suicide are posted it will be That's much better um yeah so basically what was your question sir like what was your follow up i didn't you know that to... don't you think that if there are a concrete set of guidelines established it will be better for everyone especially considering the fact that if it if it is passed through word of uh, mouth okay, that was the question any uh, speech is not required thank you uh, pradeep go ahead all right so understand so when you speak about guidelines these media channels are not exactly establishing guideline parents don't consider guidelines when it comes to a sensitive topic like their child may be committing suicide this this media reporting the fact that many people are dying it is very sensitive and it agitates the parents rather than establishing a certain set of guidelines which they have to follow in order to keep their child within reach right uh thank you i don't think we'll take another follow up uh, i just like to wrap uh, wrap up the discourse on pradeep's speech with one another question to him uh pradeep uh, of course we're all school students here so uh, this uh, question would be a bit more you know familiar to you um often when uh, there is uh, an incident of bully uh, bully to the one being bullied there's often the case of you know one once you get bullied you would have to uh, you would have to find some way to you know deal with it i don't want it to happen to me continuously some people resort to you know uh, taking standing up to the bully or some people resort to telling a teacher some people resort to taking it up directly with the principal or their parents to see what they can do further however that uh, we also all know that when you you know speak to a teacher and Uh, or go directly to the school authority uh, there's often a, 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 a phrase that gets coined around a lot uh, saying uh, snitches get stitches of course it's been paraphrased in multiple incidents in many places however uh, there are incidents like verbal bullying you know uh, completely humiliating a person you know belittling them and at those times and you know uh, other incidents like physical bullying of course that you know both of which will uh no matter uh how how much of a joke it is for even if it is banter it will and if it is true or no matter what it is it will affect you mentally no matter to what no matter how much you try to deny it right so my question to you is seeing as such a convention does exist how do you believe that uh, s- something like this should be reported to any form of authority that can actually do something about it on a school level 
um hello yeah yeah so your question is that there are school authorities who can help out the child by taking a stand against bullying yeah no my question is uh, that school the schools are supposed to take a stand as well right but seeing as like we are school students and you know we can safely say that sometimes it isn't as effective as it you know should be and that calls for you know a better measure to be taken or do you believe that either the school authorities should find a more efficient way by using like uh, the help of a counselor in house counselor or so on and so forth or uh, there should be one uh, another entity or something that should be used for such help because so far at the modern day on our level it doesn't seem as effective as it was because there are many examples like in our school like in several international uh, uh, like glo- globally different schools and many cases so uh, i'm just ask, uh, asking you because of because of the stance that you represent how should this be reported and how, and how effective uh, would that measure be in the modern day okay so you spoke about um, you spoke about how school authorities are not very effective when it comes to taking a stand against bullying so sir uh, understand that school authorities might be deemed ineffective because they just tell tell the child to ignore what the bully is saying exactly. now the bully is saying because such media has been reported right hmm so if you when when such media is not reported when the child bully does not make fun of the child using that news then the child can simply ignore it because then there will be no there will be less bullying regarding this so it's simply saying the child should ignore it right no i am saying that i am not saying that i am saying that the what school authorities are saying that the child should ignore it but when you cut out the media it will become easier for the child to ignore so you're saying if you cut out the media it would be easy for the child to just ignore the bullying so if you cut out the media the bully would not use that specific content provided by the media to bully the to, to bully the child being bullied in yeah. in a rather in, in the other situation so uh, could right. i interject uh, yeah i mean for the purpose of debate uh, this is quite interesting what we're into yeah ave go ahead sir do you really think that taking away one little thing which a bully can use to bully someone will actually stop them from bullying them if a bully wants to bully someone they will figure out some way or the other to belittle them whether or uh, however hard they have to think i'm sure it won't be that difficult for a bully to find something or the other which they can use to belittle people and again i or i'm sure all of us have had some personal experience with bullying so don't don't you agree that simply just taking away that one thing which they can use won't really change anything they'll just use something else to bully the child right so so my speech spoke about how cutting out the media will basically make it a little less right so i think that we should pertain to that part of my speech because that is the only part of my speech where i have spoken about bullying right if you cut out the media the bullying will will go a little down i'm not saying that cutting out the media will simply you know stop bullying but bullying associated with media will be diminished yes sir but bullying yeah. associated with other things will increase because the bully is going to bully whether or not they get content they want to bully so they will bully they don't care what what they are using as material to bully the person so are you saying that simply cutting out media will increase bullying on other side is it like a I'm zero sum so it won't have any effect on bullying as a whole people will still bully other people this isn't going to change anything about bullying it may it may stop people from being bullied about that specific piece of media but since the bullies don't have that specific piece of media to use so are you considering media on person. mental health and suicide only a specific piece of media yes sir it is there are 500 different things people bully each other about i'm sure you must have you, you you've experienced something or the other you might have seen it you might have heard about it i really don't think that people bully each other just over just because they found a specific thing they want to bully that person about okay so basically media what it does you all everybody has suggested in in their speeches that media provides a lot of content okay and media the uh, media doesn't have a very small effect on what the bully does what the media does is informs the bully about the problems that are there and the bully exploits this information in order to further bully the victim 
right um i would another uh, another right. thing i'd like to bring up completely different uh, not not completely different but relatively related to this point right just a second i'll come i'll, I'll come right back to you uh, so i mean at at this point i mean although it um, as I, if said like this it it seems quite okay to, you know if some if the media just goes and tells the bully that you know this is not okay and uh, the bully would make changes just like that uh, so what i'd simply like to say here is that you know there is a basic principle that we all uh, that we all learned in school again because uh, which is called effective communication which is one person says it and now it depends on how the other person registers it or understand it is the is the actual communication again as the as the phrase it gets effective now this current case of affairs is rather uh, is regrettably uh, a case where uh, we don't really have much way of making it effective to the bully it's uh, there's different personal ways of dealing with it so it's quite uh, it's quite uh, it can't be really too it can't be very binary that like you can't uh, like they will listen or they won't listen it's quite there's quite a bit of gray area that we need to uh, consider as well and yeah uh, uh i will be going off on a tangent which i don't want to so i will uh, carry on yeah so another thing i'd like to bring up is that when people talk more about mental health issues as precipitated through suicide because a lot of people have actually committed suicides as a result of being bullied don't you believe that if such information is actually spoken about and brought into the spotlight more schools will actually take concrete action from preventing in order to prevent bullying from taking from taking place don't you think it will act as a catalyst to act for for them to take some sort of action right i mean yeah that that is true uh, to be honest it's uh, it's a fair point i mean but sadly we are suffering with a time constraint so uh is sure. there anyone who'd like to you know say something uh, very quickly okay, before yeah. um, i would like to say something yeah yeah so uh, understand that yeah as we spoke about social media being a very sensitive medium of communication understand that in social media as we might have realized in recent in, in the recent times is that when such a case gets reported there is always the side there is always the bad side as you may say there is always the good side there is always the bully and there is always the victim so what happens that the bully and victim engage in discourse and the matter simply gets dissipated nobody wants to solve the problem at hand people just get engaged in talking about it like a headline right i mean that is fair to be honest but yeah uh, i mean i found this uh, line of discourse quite uh, interesting as well like the rest of the debate has been uh, but yeah i think to wrap it up uh, for this evening we will uh, we will end it with the last speak uh, with with the first uh, speaker of the opposition uh, ranak banerjee's uh, second half ranak uh, i know you've been waiting quite patiently uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, are you ready yeah definitely yeah uh, you have 2 uh, minutes on the clock so for my for saying this for the final time this evening ranak the floor is yours till now the proposition till now the proposition has been able to establish that a morally good media does not exist and on how on basically parenting but now i know it might sound alien to the entire proposition but there might exist media which are guided by certain rules as to what they can publish and how they can publish if all of you are aware of the world health organization or who they they have tons of published guidelines on how to basically report on suicide this is not uncharted territory the media knows how to report on it it has certain rules now what are these rules the first part is that you cannot oversimplify the case or you can't keep on exaggerating the case or as the term was used glorifying the case you cannot just tear down suicide to its minimal details as to why he did it let's say why he did depression that's it you can't tear it down to that neither can you glorify it by saying that so by keeping on basically giving descriptive details of how he did it how he killed himself how he accessed the tools what went through his brain as both of them will have a negative effect one very important point which nobody has understood in that while combating suicide through media there there exists an entire side of the coin where you also publish news on people who have survived suicide on people who have survived such mental health issues now these stories can be used in a extremely positive sense that along with publishing news about suicide and its awareness you also publish awareness on how people have got through this 
this will definitely be encouraged as to as to the people who are going through the same issues when you look up and you see that okay so he has gone through it he has used this sort of help okay even i can do this now we have to spread positive awareness and you also need to be aware of negative things which is yes suicide does exist it is a problem i cannot negate the relationship between media and suicide because i am uh, because there is not been enough studies on it but we cannot completely take it out of the system by saying that no we cannot report on suicide at all as problems uh, not solve themselves by not talking about it thank you right uh thank you uh, thank you ronak uh, with a uh, again a pinpoint ending to your speech we have uh, wrapped up all the speeches uh, for the for the evening uh, other is there a question to uh, ronak yes anirudh and then we'll move on to pradyum yeah so the who has provided some guidelines to report a suicide case on media Yes. but don't you think such guidelines are not being followed so we should stop reporting such cases on the media well i cannot exactly tell you to what extent guidelines aren't being followed but i can tell you that if guidelines aren't followed there are certain punishments the press doesn't roam in a completely regulation free world where they can publish whatever they want like i think you are aware already arnav goswami is in a case which is being heard in the sc due to certain reporting like so this proves that yes the media are subject to guidelines and regulations and if you don't follow them you will get punished no so my question is not about whether they being punished or not my question is if the guidelines aren't followed should they be punished or should they not report the case at all if the guidelines aren't being followed they should definitely be punished like obviously if nobody follows the law you punish them obviously Right. Uh, with that being said, we'll take Pradyum Pradyuman's question right now. Okay, sir. So, sir, put forward by the proposition in your speech, opposition in opposition in your speech, that there are certain guidelines established for making media both positive rather than negative. Yes. And then you said, and the opposition has also also come forward and said that there needs to be improvement. How do you how do you come out come out saying that we need improvement when there are certain guidelines that are not working? And what guidelines do you want to establish okay so due to a time due to this time constraint i can't tell you every single guideline and every single rule which exists but what we can understand is yes improvement is required as to how it is being published in the details which are being given but that doesn't mean that guidelines doesn't exist so basically improvement is required into how you follow these guidelines it is what i'm saying is that it is not something so unknown to us that um, that media will report what they want how they want if they follow the guidelines that is the improvement can i interject yeah um uh, sure go ahead yeah the fact that i asked the question if the guidelines aren't followed should the case, should the cases be reported at should the cases be reported is the reason you said that the who has imposed some guidelines and then you said that the media needs some improvement that that shows that the media isn't following the guidelines so okay. should in such a scenario should the media report the case that that's the reason i asked the question in the first place let's say let's say there is there's a there is a suicide case a now uh let's say cnn reports it in a certain way which follows the guidelines right so now he, the cnn isn't punished by any of the press regulating authorities but now let's say nbc reports it in such a way which doesn't follow the guidelines so they are punished now the improvement can be that there that everybody starts reporting it in the same way i am not denying that the that i am not saying that the media is perfect as it is it might re, it might require improvement and that and that improvement isn't completely following the guidelines right i mean yeah into that one one just sure go ahead so do you not think that the media gains more from just reporting suicide as uh, suicide as it currently does and don't you think it will be it would be uh, it would be a bad improve like a bad change from the perspective of the media to make it more helpful rather than to make it more controversial see now all i like to say is let's say if the guidelines are followed completely strictly and there is a proper rule of law established then the media will lose more by breaking the guidelines you will lose more if you are punished for theft than if you are the theft involves risk right So so but if, but as you said, it is already breaking the guidelines. So why is still why is it why is it still going on doing it like that? I cannot. I will not say that it has been going on in uh, going on everywhere, and then there that there is blatant misrepresentation of suicide on the media. 
but only the few sparse cases which are they just should they just should be properly punished that's all i will not say that there is blatant misrepresentation of suicide by the media all right fair enough i i'd like hey. to interject um sure go ahead yeah so i'd like to add that when uh, media is reporting about suicide it's not necessary that they include the names of the people who uh, of the person who has committed suicide and the and the names of their family members uh, the proposition has continually spoken about how it causes issues in their in the social circle for their family and yes this that is an issue but i think that's firstly due to the fact uh, due to uh, thing mental health issues already being stigmatized as i already said and if we can simply keep the names of everyone involved out of the media and ha- establish such guidelines where the media establishes t- t- says that yeah, this happened this is why it happened and this is what you should do to prevent it if that is the way it is reported then i think we should move forward with that right uh, i mean thank you uh, thank you ranak thank you everyone actually for joining in today i think if this was actually quite a productive uh, debate that we had seeing as we could have a few more interjections this time and you know incorporate a, bu- a, f- a few more views uh, but yeah before i really move on and say anything is there anything you guys would like to say about the debate we had today or uh, should we just move further on uh, anyone aver ranak or rohan well, i think or... it was a lot more productive because today we deviated more from the standard procedure and turned the debate into less of a formal um more yeah, we rather had a discussion it yeah. was yeah. more of a more of an exchange of ideas rather than a clash of ideas true it, i mean in, i mean to be honest like my the only reason i wanted to have more interjections this round is because you know it would make room for more you know productivity in terms of and, and like get somewhere i mean I mean I think safe I can safely say that in terms of you know exchanging ideas we did we did that quite effectively to be honest uh but yeah anyone else uh, ranak pradyum ja yeah adding on to what avay said like i mean at first everybody thought that the motion was really biased towards like you know the oppo- opposition not stating anything but as everybody it was everybody's pers- perspective that the motion was really biased but as i think we progressed throughout the debate we saw that there were some constructives that could say that media should be a little you know diminished to I mean the power of the media should be a little diminished when it comes to reporting suicide so i think that there are two sides to every coin and there are two sides to every emotion so i think we explored all sides right i mean yeah that does that does make sense to be honest uh uh yeah uh, is there anyone else uh, who'd like to you know get any form of feedback so to speak uh ranak uh, or uh, jay yeah one thing um the entire proposition was built on the idea that talking about or reporting about suicide is going to propagate the idea it's going to create more suicide right they should have rather talked that uh instead of reporting about suicide they should convert and talk about mental health that would have given their argument more substance that that is that is actually true because when i was when i was decide, uh, actually for the viewers watching the process by which we decide the topics is that i put forward five topics and uh, the speakers chosen for each uh, debate you know vote on one and all before research and then are given stances and then come out here and debate and uh, uh, that is actually something i was thinking about when i was choosing that particular topic thank you for pointing that out jay um but anyhow i think uh, uh, all of you were still waiting here for me to do one thing which is release the awards so i mean i'd simply just like to say one tiny little thing which is uh, that this round was too close for me too close to moderate uh, because uh, it was it was such in a case where if one person didn't speak for very long the other person just went right ahead and so on and so forth it came to because of uh, i mean i personally told you that you know certain inter- areas of interjection which would that, that amount would be a bit unfair to the rest so i i tried to keep that amount of discourse a bit off the marking sh- marking sheet so as to make it a bit more fair however of course there are a few things i need to consider in terms of you know the debater skill as a whole right but uh, i mean the only one to feedback i'd like to give is 
when you're speaking, I mean, I'd even like to point out examples like people like Anirudh or people like Jay. When you when these people spoke, if if you like from that style of speaking, you saw that little tone of empathy and in, like they spoke from the perspective of understanding the the position that the victims, the victim of the uh, uh, the suicide victim and the family of the suicide victim, the position they were in. Right, they spoke after considering that perspective and you know put it forward to you that way which was which you know really helped them in in like the development of their speech however there's another way you could attack it which is a more straight to the point what it is what it should be approach like what Ave did that is a considering under uh, that these are two approaches that you can use however i because you have four minutes like people like rohan like when you spoke you had some interesting things to say but like if you, you know, continued a bit further and, you know, elaborated a bit more and, you know, were a bit more confident in your own speaking style because the points that you put forward to me were very good. If you if you use those points and, you know, actually question some people like Rana or Pradyum or so on and so forth about, you know, what they said, actually, you would you would see that you're actually getting somewhere further, which is, and, and, the, and I think the only thing that held someone like, Rohan back was just your confidence which is why I mean I want to see people like Rohan return as well because uh, I mean uh, Ave uh, uh, Ave has been here for almost every round if not every round of our debates and to be honest when I when I was working with other judges and judging myself you know Ave was also was someone who was on the lower areas of the marking and, and each time he just bumps a bit ahead uh, because of something he drew from in the previous one, I would assume. So, I mean, in simple, just confidence and, you know, think of the tone of voice you would want to use because something like suicide, it's a very intricate matter and you need to attack it with that kind of wit, with that kind of empathy, that kind of tone. Because at the end of the day, you can't just throw facts at people with such an intricate matter. It's very delicate to handle. So, I mean, um, that that's that's actually how it is because if people... If you give out, if you give people the impression that you're saying it for the sake of it, they won't really listen to you. The whole point of our debate is, to, you know, get the idea across and, you know, explain what you're trying to say. But anyhow, uh, I will not uh, uh, jibber jabber for too long and get right into the awards. Uh, we had two ties and a clear uh, first position award towards the end. Uh, in third position uh, with uh, was uh, our birthday boy. Happy birthday, Pradyam. Uh, in third position, uh, and uh, ta- and going with him uh, on the, on the podium is Anirudh Choudhury. Congratulations to you too. Uh, it was uh, uh, if you're wondering where you were marked, uh, uh, Pradyum was a bit more superior in terms of the uh, question and answer session, and Anirudh was a bit more superior in terms of his speech. If I mean superior may not be the correct word, but I think you get what I mean. Uh, and in second position, we had another tie between Jay Purwar and Abhay Tulsiyan. And uh, uh, both of you really, really excelled because as I mentioned in my, in my when I spoke to you earlier, Jay's uh, empathetic way of going about it and uh, Abhay's, you know, straightforward manner of, you know, but like making you understand and at the same time really equated each other at this point in time and your question answer was like quite literally dot on point with maybe here and there in, in both sections. So congratulations to the both of you. It was genuinely a pleasure to hear your speeches. Uh, and in first position, of course, it was Ranak Banerjee. I mean, I mean, it goes without saying. Ranak, he, uh, congratulations, by the way. Uh, he's, he spoke from both that empathetical perspective. His questions were addressed from the em- empathetical perspective. He was being formal as well as, you know, uh, trying to uh, trying to you know get that understanding with with each speaker. He was you know every time I when I'm looking for something in a speaker, you know I want to be actually understand what he's saying. I want to be I want to be swayed as a person, but right? I want my opinion to be you know hindered by what he's saying. If he's has a similar opinion as me, I want him to show me why I am correcting and believing what I am believing, or if, or if he is against what I believe personally, I want him to show me why. That is what I'm always looking at. And each speaker here did exactly that. However, Ranak just did that a little better than the rest. In the, it, I, I have to put it as a very blanket statement right now and say Ranak performed very exceptionally in terms of those, those criteria of marking that were specified. But anyhow, 
uh, congratulations to all of you and i look forward to seeing you all happy birthday pradyum uh, and uh, i look forward to seeing all of you all, uh, in our later debates uh, and before we go off uh, is there anything else you would like to say no topic was bye sir Uh, the topic. I just like to thank you for your valuable feedback. Ah, uh, uh, no problem, no problem. Uh, glad, uh, uh, glad to have you. Uh, yeah, man, great work moderating and judging, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh I mean, R- Ranak, you were saying something. I couldn't hear you. Topic was biased. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it was uh, chosen with you guys as well. So, I mean. in the in the we'll be we were refreshing the topics each time so i mean uh, whatever you all decide i mean i'm only proposing like a area to you uh, so anyway thank you guys and i think we'll see you on the next one and yeah that's yeah. what that was uh-